Hi, I'm Gray Fredrickson, and I'm a producer. Been doing it for 50 years now. for the best picture of the year are Chinatown, a Robert Evans production, Paramount, Robert Evans producer. The Conversation, a director's company production, Paramount, Francis Ford Coppola producer, Fred Roos, co-producer. The Godfather Part Two, a Coppola company production, Paramount, Francis Ford Coppola producer, Gray Fredrickson and Fred Roos, co-producers. Lenny, a Marvin Worth production, United Artists, Marvin Worth producer. The Towering Inferno, an Irwin Allen production, 20th Century Fox, Warner Brothers, Irwin Allen producer. And the winner is... Godfather Part Two, Francis Ford Coppola, Gray Fredrickson, and Fred Worth. An Oklahoma City native, Gray Fredrickson graduated from Cassidy School and the University of Oklahoma. He also put his early love for water to work and started a water skiing school at Lake Murray. He continued to teach the sport abroad as he traveled Europe and attended Switzerland's University of Lausanne before landing in Rome. It was here in Italy that he fell into the movie business by accident and worked with a number of local directors. His last Italian movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, starred a young Clint Eastwood. Back stateside, Eastwood introduced Fredrickson to producer Al Ruddy. Although Fredrickson declined an offer from Eastwood to become president of his production company, the two maintained a lifelong friendship. Fredrickson and Ruddy partnered to produce Little Foss and Big Halsey, starring Robert Redford. Paramount was so impressed with the management of the budget and return at the box office that the duo was offered a second film, The Godfather, starring Marlon Brando. Just five years after entering the movie business, Fredrickson had made his first film with Marlon Brando, Candy, and was working with legendary Godfather author Mario Puzo and Francis Ford Coppola, among others, to bring to life the iconic series. Thus began a multi-decade association with Coppola and his Zotrope Studios, as well as an Oscar for Fredrickson and the other producers of The Godfather II. While at Zotrope, Fredrickson also produced Apocalypse Now, earning an Academy Award nomination, and The Outsiders, based on the cult hit novel by Tulsa's S.E. Hinton. The Outsiders launched the careers of many leading men of Hollywood, including Patrick Swayze, 
Rob Lowe, and Tom Cruise. He produced Ladybugs with Rodney Dangerfield and UHF with Weird Al Yankovic. Fredrickson's career has provided us some of the most iconic images, music, and lines in cinematic history. each other many years, but this is the first time you ever came to me for counsel or for help. I can't remember the last time that you invited me to your house for a cup of coffee. Even though my wife is godmother to your only child. But let's be frank, you, you never wanted my friendship. And uh, you were afraid to be in my debt. Everyone gets everything he wants. I wanted a mission. And for my sins, they gave me one. If I say it's safe to suck this beach, Captain, it's safe to suck this beach! I love the smell of napalm in the morning. It smells like victory. Hello, Daryl. Long time no see. Hello, Paul. What's up? I used to buddy around together, play football. I'll take you. Fredrickson also stepped out from behind the camera, sometimes for fun and sometimes to save the budget, acting in a number of movies, including Machine Gun McCain, 1941, and Big Wednesday with Jan Michael Vincent. He wrote the original story for Bad Girls, starring Andy McDowell and Drew Barrymore, and his television credits include the return of Mike Hammer. With his wife Karen and two young children, Fredrickson returned home. The family settled in Oklahoma City and has been home to many milestones. Kelsey being presented at the Bow Arts Ball and Tyler's high school graduation. In 2000, Fredrickson started a technical film and video program at Oklahoma City Community College. He has brought Hollywood to the heartland by sharing his experience and allowing students access to industry icons. Through state-of-the-art equipment, large sound stages, and strong faculty, students are carving out for themselves successful careers in the world of film. All made possible by the legacy created by Oklahoma's own Gray Fredrickson. And the winner is... Godfather Part Two. Francis Ford Coppola, Gray Fredrickson, and Fredrickson. I'd like to thank a fabulous crew that worked very hard to make this picture what it was. And thank you to all of you. Thank you very much. The thing that sticks with you the longest is, of course, winning an Oscar. 
because you see it sitting there on the desk every day. And it kind of reminds you, hey, even when things are bad, hey, at least you got that sucker sitting there. When I was 20 years old and graduated from OU, and the day of my last class, I didn't even stick around for graduation. I was on a, a plane, and I went to Europe. And living in Europe and ski bumming around Europe, I met some filmmakers in in Rome, which was sort of a runaway film capital at the time, and. Uh, started working with them, uh, working on little Italian films, and that got me started in the movie business. And I worked on The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, became friends with Clint Eastwood, went back to Hollywood with him, and uh, it just kept working. Uh, no, well, you know, yeah, I loved movies, but I didn't know anything about making movies. They didn't have any kind of programs, uh, film programs at the university or anything when I was growing up. Uh, I just, I worked at, and there was a movie theater over on May Avenue called the Lakeside Theater. And I worked there as an usher and, uh, and ticket taker and uh, uh, selling popcorn and uh, worked a little bit up in the projection booth. I loved that, operating the projectors, but I never got really good at it, but I loved that part, the machinery. Light metal, there was a lot of uh, Americans living in Italy, uh, sort of expatriate uh, actors and crew guys, and most of, most of the actors were working in dubbing. They were dubbing English, Italian movies in English and vice versa. And uh, there were some young filmmakers there, and they asked me if I would produce a movie. I said, how do you, how do you produce a movie? They said, get the money. And I guess nothing's changed. It's still pretty much the same. So I came back here to Oklahoma where I'd gone to school and went to all my, started a limited partnership and raised some money and went back and we made the movie and it was a little independent film and it starred John Barrymore who was living in Rome. He's the father of Drew Barrymore. He's died since then. But he was a young actor living in Rome. So I had something to sell. I said, do you want to make a movie in Italy starring John Barrymore Jr.? And it was a, you know, it was a little package that I had to sell. And that's how it got going. And then after I did that, while making that movie, I met all the other film people in Rome, and they asked me to help be involved with them on movies. And so I started working in production. And they, uh, the producer of uh, the Fistful of Dollars movies, Alberto Grimaldi called me and said, we're doing one called The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and we want to film it in America. Will you come and be the production manager for America? And I went on that, and that's how I met Clint. And uh, he came, we came back to California together, sort of. I mean, we weren't on the same airplane, but we. I came back, and uh, through Clint, I met a guy that wanted Clint for a movie named Al Ruddy. And Al Ruddy and I became partners on, uh, we did a little movie called uh, Little Foss and Big Halsey with Robert Redford. And that was uh, very inexpensive. And Paramount was impressed at how cheap we did it. So they asked us if we would produce this book that they had just bought called The Godfather because they didn't think organized crime movies would work because they'd done a picture called The Brotherhood. And it died with Kirk Douglas. So they said, we'll just capitalize on the title, we'll do it down and dirty and cheap, and make it modern day. And we hired Francis, and of course he changed it all, and the rest is history. First, really, first time we got to know each other, we were on an airplane going to Las Vegas together. And he had, that's when I first learned he wasn't going to shoot low budget in modern day. He was going to, he had the book, and he turned the book into a script. Big notebook binder, and he had each page of the book glued on each page paper and really pretty much shot the book is what he did. I've seen pictures of, of that notebook. He's got notes and underlines and yeah. highlights. And well, I was sitting with him on the plane when he was putting it all together. And uh, that was when we first met. And uh, they hated the movie when we were making it. They wanted to fire us. 
Uh, they thought it was terrible, and so Francis and I were sort of a team. We bonded on that and uh, stayed together from then on. Well, when I was 20 years old and graduated from OU, and the day of my last class, I didn't even stick around for graduation. I was on a, a plane, and I went to Europe. And living in Europe and ski bumming around Europe, I met some filmmakers in, the, in uh, Rome, which was sort of a runaway film capital at the time, and uh, started working with them, uh, working on little Italian films, and that got me started in the movie business. I was living in Europe and uh, didn't know what I was going to do with myself. I knew nothing about movies. I got a job working in Rome, Italy for a big construction company and uh, met a lot of people there that were in the movie business, working on movies. And uh, I just fell into it by accident and started doing, uh, uh, well I produced my first movie because they needed someone to produce a movie so I raised some money in Oklahoma. And that started me on a path working with Italian movies for about 10 years in Italy as a production person made friends and uh, teamed up with uh, Clint Eastwood on a movie called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. And then Clint Eastwood and I came back to Hollywood kind of together. He enticed me to come back and I came back to Hollywood. And um, we worked on a couple of pictures, a thing called Play Misty for Me. And then I got a job, a, a picture of Paramount, uh, Little Foss and Big Halsey. Robert Redford, a motorcycle racing movie, and we made it so cheaply and so well that Paramount gave us the movie The Godfather to produce. And from then on, I was uh, on my way and at Paramount and other places, working on, uh, for 20 years, 25 years with Francis Coppola on his movies. And I'm now here at the Oklahoma City Community College heading up the, well I don't head it up, but I started the film program here at the college. And uh, it's having tremendous success, started with nothing and we now have over 300 students a semester coming through and uh, all kinds of equipment and a sound stage and uh, we're making movies and documentaries and, uh, and uh, it's the best, best game in town in, in this part of the country. Uh, my thoughts are uh, wonderful. I'm just, I was thrilled and uh, it's a very special thing for me because I'm from Oklahoma and I love Oklahoma and uh, Oklahoma is a part of me uh, and uh, to be accepted by my home state is, uh, is quite an honor and a treat. I think if I think I would it would be my f number one Oklahoma because it's Oklahoma I, Oscar was kind of nice you know there's not not that many Oscars around for best pictures sure. and uh, so that was I was talking to John Harrington and uh, he was telling me there's only like I think there's like three or four hundred Best Picture Oscars out there. And I said, well, John, there's only 300 people of the entire civilization that have walked in space. Of the billions of people that have been on this planet, only 300 have walked in space. John is one of them. So <laughs> that's hard to beat.
You spend time with your family? Sure I do. Good. Because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. 